Let's solve these problems. Evaluate the following integral. So let's start with 1. Integral of 2 e raised to 5x dx. So we can apply first the u substitution. So we can let u be equal to 5x. Getting the derivative of both sides. Derivative of u that's du. Derivative of 5x that's equal to 5 dx. And uh, here we just need the dx term on the original integral. So we get rid of this extra coefficient of 5. So I can divide both sides by 5. So I will have du over 5 is equal to dx. Substituting in the original integral. So we will have, by the way, this 2 is constant. I can just put it in front of the integral first. So I will have 2 integral of e raised to 5x which is equal to u. Then this dx is equal now to du over 5. So this over 5, it's just a constant of 1 fifth. I can again put in front of the integral. So I will multiply 2 by 1 fifth. So that will be 2 fifths integral of e raised to u du. And we can evaluate the integral of e raised to u du as using the formula, the integral of e raised to u du is the same as e raised to u plus c. So therefore, we will have 2 fifths times integral of e raised to u is the same as e raised to u plus c. Then we transform back the u in terms of the original variable, which is 5x. So the final answer should be 2 fifths e raised to 5x plus c. For number 2, we have the integral of e raised to arctangent of x over 1 plus x squared dx. Again, let's use u substitution so we can let u be equal to arctangent of x, getting the derivative of both sides, derivative of u, that's du, derivative of arctangent of x, that's 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So notice that we have created this term, dx over 1 plus x squared, which is now equal to du. Substituting in the original integral, we will have e raised to arctan of x, which is equal to u. Then this dx over 1 plus x squared, it's now equal to du. Again, we can evaluate the integral of e raised to u du, same as simply e raised to u plus e. But don't forget to transform back the u in terms of arctangent of x. So the final answer should be e raised to arctangent of x plus e. For number 3, we have the integral of dx over the square root of x e raised to the square root of x. So let's apply u substitution first. So I can let u be equal to the square root of x. Getting the derivative of both sides, derivative of u, that's du. For the derivative of square root of x, remember that square root of x can be written as x raised to 1 half. So to get its derivative applying power rule, that will be 1 half x raised to negative 1 half dx. So we have du equal to 1 half times transforming x raised to negative 1 half as positive exponent. So that will be 1 over x raised to 1 half dx transforming into radical form. That's the same as 1 over 2 square root of x dx. So notice that we have created this term dx over the square root of x in the original integral. We just need to get rid of this extra coefficient of 1 half. So I can multiply both sets first by 2. So we will have 2 du equal to canceling out the 2. We have dx over the square root of x. Let's substitute with the original integral. So we will have the integral. Of so let's start with the dx over the square root of x. So that's now equal to 2 du. Then over e raised to the square root of x, which we let as u. So we have e raised to u. So this 2 is just constant. I can just put in front of the integral. So we will have 2 integral of du over e raised to u. So let's transform 1 over e raised to u first in terms of negative exponents. So that's the same as 2 times the integral of e raised to negative u du. So again, we can let another variable, let's say v, be equal to negative u because we cannot evaluate this integral directly. So get the derivative of both sides. Derivative of v is dv. Derivative of negative u, that's negative du. Therefore, and we simply divide both sets by negative 1, we will have negative dv is equal to du. Substituting, we have 2 times the integral of e 
raised to negative u which is now equal to v and this du is equal now to negative dv. This negative sign here, it means a coefficient of negative 1, which is a constant. So I can just put in front of the integral. So I multiply 2 times negative 1, that will be negative 2 integral of e raised to v dv. Evaluating this integral, we have negative 2 times integral of e raised to v dv. That's the same as e raised to v plus c. But let's transform back the v in terms of the original variable. So first, transform back the v in terms of u. So v is equal to negative u. So we will have negative 2 e raised to negative u plus c. Lastly, transform back the u in terms of x. We let u be equal to the square root of x. So the final answer should be negative 2 e raised to negative square root of x plus c. For number 4, we have the integral of cotangent x e raised to ln of sin x dx. So if we use u substitution, we can let u be equal to ln of sin x. Get the derivative of both sides. Derivative of u, that's du. Derivative of ln sin x, that will be 1 over sin x times by chain rule, the derivative of sin x is cosine x dx. So applying trigonometric identity, we know that cosine x over sine x, that's equal to cotangent x dx. And therefore, we have created this term, cotangent x dx on the integral, which is now equal to du. If we substitute, we will have integral of e raised to ln of sine x, that's now equal to u. And this cot x dx is equal now to du. Evaluating the integral of e raised to u du, it's equal to e raised to u plus c. And again, transform back the u in terms of the original variable. u is ln sine x, so the final answer should be e raised to ln of sine x plus c. Okay, so now it's your turn. So try to evaluate this integral and just comment your answers.